what it is, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in here to another episode here on the Speedbug channel. Switching up a little bit, doing a little video on the uh, cell phone here, but uh, we're going to film this, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the uh, Camaro here. You guys seem to really like this build, and uh wanted to give you all a few tips and tell you about, you know, some of the problems and not all of just the good that this build actually had but did encounter some issues and stuff coming along with it um so i know of many of the other builders and stuff that maybe have tried to shoot from much power uh, this much power and stuff like that yes i know you need fuel systems yes we know the limits of the lt4 system yes we know that you're only going to be able to get so much out of it but i wanted to really push it and see how far i could actually get Again, the uh, goal was to create a 1,000 horsepower on the uh, LT4 injectors and uh, the LT4 fuel system, and I did, and I did do it. We did make the passes and, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it all worked well. Uh, I uh, specifically tuned the cars and have them all dynoed on a Mustang dyno. Uh, not that I have anything against the dyno jets, but uh, specifically what I always use is the Mustang dyno. Um, so I wanted to uh, let you guys know a little bit about that and... Uh, so when the car is actually getting loaded and we're tuning it, the, the air mass, you know, when we were able to load it on the dyno, wasn't as high as what you could do on the street. And it showed and we got the car all dialed in with the correct air fuel ratio and everything like that, but it was not enough when we went on the street. That's why you always, when you're, you know, tuning a car and you're building something, you, you can get really close and you test and do everything as much as you can on the dyno then you take it out on the street and because the street is is where it really lives it's you know that's it's that's its real place so was able to load it a lot more on the street made an extra two pounds of boost on the street and that's really where i completely lost you know all of the uh the compatibility of the of the of the stock fuel system I was able to make a few glory runs, of course, on the dyno, but on the dyno, I was able to see exactly where the fuel system cut out, and it pretty much was just about there. But on the uh, on the street, it was pretty much, you know, out, and it was losing fuel, spraying, you know, fuel still in the exhaust, and it just wasn't, the, the pulse switch was through the roof. If anybody knows anything about tuning the LTs, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to go into it and explain exactly how to tune it. But that's exactly what happened with that. So obviously figuring that out, looking at, you know, logging the car, um, you know, pull the plugs. You could see, of course, you know, running all the timing, seeing that it's hot, super hot, seeing that it's super lean, um, obviously it didn't work. So for the one time, yes, uh, Speedbug uh, pulled it up his car uh, so that it doesn't put as much of a strain on the fuel system when I do decide to beat on this thing on the street. So right now it still makes about 15, 15 and a half pounds of boost. Now you guys got to keep in mind, that's not much more boost over the factory blower. However, but you must understand that the factory blower is a 1.7 and this is a 2.65. So it moves twice the amount of CFM at the same PSI. So you have to keep that in mind and that's why it's also running out of fuel. Um, of course, with the cam and the, all the other stuff really doesn't help either. So I was able to do that. It's right at about 15 pounds of boost. I probably took maybe, I don't know, 50 to 100 horse out of it to just to kind of keep it happy but we ended up did buying an entire fuel system for this thing too but i wanted to see if i could actually do it and then yes i did i would not build this to build or do anything or give this to any of my customers or clients or anything like that that would ask me for a car i would seriously detune it and then i would put something together with them for that now anybody that knows anything about the direct injection stuff they do know that the di injectors anything aftermarket is extremely expensive. We uh, two good brands, which you have Lingen Filter and XDI. Uh, I personally went with the Lingen Filter ones, and it's no secret or anything like that. If you want to look it up, because plenty of people follow me in this car specifically for it, they're forty four hundred dollars just for the injectors. Then you got to buy the the high side fuel pump, and then you still need a low side to feed it. Uh, you can feed it with twins, or you can feed it with a single. Uh, I am personally going to feed mine with twins. Uh, so that my pulse width is super low, my duty cycle will be super low, and I will pretty much have 12, 13, 1400 compatibility as far as these injectors, but only be running roughly around a thousand, so uh, they will not be strained or anything, of course, at all. I want to build the build efficiently, uh, efficiently and make the car run very efficient. When I command the injector to fire at the correct um, uh, uh, 
uh, source of uh, uh, at the correct at the correct SOI. That's exactly what I want it to uh, command to do. I don't want to have to prolong it or extend it or make it fire early or later. Uh, so that will take care of all of that. Is an expensive cost and expensive build, but you can't go this far and not in, and not keep going. So stay tuned for exactly what happens with that. It's going to actually be going back into the shop to have the entire. Uh, the injectors, the high side and the low side completely redone. And then we'll see if we can pull it back up and see how much we can get out of 93 before it starts to detonate. Yeah, you can get more boost, 17, 18, 19 pounds on 93, but then you have to run significantly less timing and you don't want to really do that. It's more efficient to run more timing and less boost because then you'll get more of a complete burn. You don't want your torque curve to look completely out of whack on the dyno just to get a great dyno number, where if you have a flatter and smoother one, the car would actually be faster with less power. For the people that tune in and understand how horsepower and torque works, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. It's not about the peak numbers, it's more so about the curve. But stay tuned about that, that's the update with that. The car works, the car runs, it's probably slightly under a thousand right now, but Stay tuned for the next thing. It will be back over. No problem. If I was able to do it with no fuel, I'm going to be able to do it really good with fuel. And hell, if I need to do anything, I can rich it up. And maybe, who knows, one day we'll throw something else on it. Maybe some mess or something or anything else. I don't know. Who knows what I might do. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in for another episode here on the Speedbook channel. We'll catch you guys soon. Peace out. Yo, what it is, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in here to another episode here on the Speedbug channel. Trying a few things differently, filming here on the old iPhone rather than the GoPro. Kind of like on the iPhone. It also makes it a little easier to transfer stuff rather than the GoPro. But the GoPro is still nice to be able to stick into places and stuff. But wanted to come to you guys today. Uh, no crazy action content, but just a little bit of me yapping uh, to let you guys know what's going on here with the Z01. And of course, the Trans Am here behind me. So... Uh, we'll start with the Camaro because a lot of you guys have really been wanting to uh, know a little bit about this car. So let me go ahead and uh, pop the hood so that uh, you guys can see this. All right. Let's get on over to the hood. So for the ones that don't know, this is my 2019 ZL1 Camaro. This is kind of hard to do with one hand. Ugh. So... Here is my 2019 ZL1 Camaro. I have put a Magnuson 2650 blower on it. It still is a stock short block. It is cammed. It uh, is on full 93 octane. Uh, the goal was about a thousand horsepower and to have a pretty much mid nine seconds to high nine second car on the stock 20s with street tires, no drag packs, no nothing like that. That was the ultimate goal and that was achieved. Um, Lots of testing and stuff like that with fueling and and things like that. It's not highly hard to make, you know, six, seven hundred wheel or something like that when you're on the stock fuel system and then timing and how far can you push it and stuff like that. So I was able to uh, pretty much get uh, figured all that out, um, you know, with multiple tuning and, and, and the SOIs and, and everything else under the sun. People that know the LT4, they're just kind of a pain in the ass when you start to really push them towards its limit. Yes, on E85, yes, on meth, all that is very possible, but I like to do things that most people will not like to do. So this car is completed, it was achieved. There is one part that I actually do have that has not been put in here yet, uh, but I'm still debating on whether or not to put it in this car rather than also maybe potentially put it in Snow White, which is my white Corvette. So here, from, for the people that want to know, this is the Lingen filter high pressure injector set. Yes, for the people that want to know, yes, are those those injectors for direct injection cars that are like $5,000? Yes, they absolutely are. Have I tried out and used them? Yes. Do they work? Absolutely. Yes. Do most people put port injection on things to, for a lot cheaper? Yes. It is not the wrong way, but it's also not the right way. So I wanted to try and do things a little bit different. Um, now that I've really reached my goal, but I'm almost at, you know, full pulse with the maximum duty cycle of the current injectors, I don't really like to run things, obviously, all the way at their limit. So... Those will most likely be going in and I will be buying another set for my uh, race car. Not that I really need them on my race car, 
but uh, it'd be nice also if one day maybe if I do want to run full E or something on my race car, not this car, uh, I can also do so. Um, but since I run a lot of meth on the other car, uh, it's not really needed. It really takes a good load and strain off of the fuel system. Uh, as far as the Trans Am, uh, let's move on over here. The Trans Am is completed. Uh, for the ones that haven't seen this, this is my Trans Am. It is pretty much fully built as well. It is a 2002. It has 69,000 miles on the body. It has built motor, built, uh, built transmission, uh, Mosier 9-inch rear end uh, with a spool. And uh, she really gets down and, and goes. A couple months ago, I hurt the motor pretty good. So get that fixed, fixed that all up. Uh, redid all the rebuilding that needed to be done and had it of course retuned it as well and uh, she is all set and ready to go this is my baby so I don't really drive this one all of the time uh, but it is absolutely still of this car and my Z01 and my Corvette and hell even when I had my other Corvette when I had both of them at the same time this is still hands down 150% my most favorite car uh, for the ones that haven't see inside it's pretty pristine you guys could see that. I know a lot of you guys like that. It is pretty Christine. I mean, hey, look, 20 year old car and it's just starting to get a few wrinkles here on the seats, but not a lot in the passenger seats and everything like that. The car is perfect. And uh, even if it wasn't perfect, it's still my most favorite car. But both the cars are operational and running uh, soon. I just want to make sure I have a few other things tightened up in this tune before I do it. Uh, we're also going to do a top speed run soon with this thing. Um, so far, I've been 204 miles an hour in this car. Uh, the goal is to get over 210. So we will also see if it could do that now that it has uh, both new fuel pumps inside of it. So it should be able to do that and supply enough fuel up top. Make sure you run the conservative timing and everything else looks good. You know, we have a couple hundred fifty, eighty mile an hour pulls, and uh, we'll double check all that before we, you know, run this thing with my foot on the floor for thirty or forty five seconds. But uh, that is an update on this, a garage update for the uh, shed slash other garage, and um, that is also coming too. So I'll keep you posted on that. Some F four fifty videos coming soon. Uh, and also a video update on the white Corvette on broken parts and what we're waiting for. So absolutely. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I will see you all for another episode here on the Speedbug channel. Peace.